I'm going to talk about the corporate opportunity doctrine, saying that until the year of 2021, the corporate opportunity doctrine was discussed in a hand full of court opinions, focusing mainly on private companies. In late 2021, two court opinions in Israel here, in the, uh, uh, in the Tel Aviv uh, court, uh, were published by the economic division, the Tzim case and the Chagag case. Yet the matter hasn't been addressed by the Supreme Court in Israel. Section 254A of the Israeli Companies Law prohibits directors and officer, officers of usurping corporate opportunities for their personal benefit. This pro prohibition represents an approach which views corporate opportunities as an asset of the company. At the heart of the doctrine lies the need to interpret the phrase corporate opportunity. The meaning of phrase corporate opportunity was discussed only in a few court opinions and the matter hasn't been addressed in the Supreme Court in Israel yet. I will show now about some details about the case that I'm going to talk about. The team case, the players, the fo I'm focusing on the players, the same urban company, line of business, shopping centers, and yielding real estate. Another player, main major player, is Baron Miller Energy Company, line of business, renewable energy. And the third player, the third major player, was Mr. Rani Tsim, controlling shareholder, chairman of the board, and directors, the CEO. The I'm going to speak about the transaction itself, how it was planned in the beginning as strategic uh, transaction. Convertible loans secured by the controlling stake at Bern Middle Energy. The second point is of the uh, transaction was joint venture, controlled by Team Urban, operating in a field of renewable energy. And the third point is issuing Team Urban five million stock of uh, options for free. In the background, that was in 2019 or 20, the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic outburst and the second issue that was very major, took a very major uh, place was the massive increase in Baron Miller stock value. It's what, it was tripled the value of the uh, of that, comparing to the, the, the period of the strategic uh, transaction within a very short time, less than a year time. The second uh, development was the termination of the strategic transaction. Okay. Okay. Due to change in Baron Miller's stock value, it decided by the Baron Miller to exercise its right to terminate the strategic transaction. Baron Miller then offered Sim Urban or, or Mr. Ramit Sim, if Sim Urban declines, to enter in, into a new transaction, a financial transaction. And the details of the, fi the fi financial tra transaction was minority stake of 17% representing a share of 4.3 shekels per share when share was traded for more than 10 shekels in the market. Blocked shares and deadline midnight. They just opposed the new terms of the transaction to seem for a very short time till for a period of less than 24 hours. And the, the audit committee of the team company was trying to see, to, 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 to take a decision if to take the uh, new uh, transaction or to leave it if it's uh, uh, for their decision. They held a meeting with the company general counsel yeah. within, with an external legal counsel and special market advisor. And they discussed the change in Baron Miller position as well as its intention to offer the finan financial action transaction to Mr. Tsim at the same time, assuming that it will be rejected by Sim Urban. 
they discuss, the, the transaction was discussed whether if Rani Tsim enters into the financial transaction, he will usurp a corporate opportunity given the differences between the strategic transaction and the financial transaction. And approved, approved allowing Mr. Rami Tsim to enter the financial transaction in accordance with the mechanism set in section 255 of the Israeli company's law. That was the decision of the audit company and it was approved by the company, the, the company uh, uh, at the same time. The key question that brought to the company, to, to the court was, the financial transaction was offered to Tsim Urban only after the strategic transaction was canceled by Bern Miller. The second issue was, Tsim Urban audit committee and board directors rejected the financial transaction for business consideration and it was ultimately taken by Mr. Rami Tsim. Did Mr. Rami Tsim usurp a corporate opportunity? That was the question that, we had to deal, that I had to deal with. And as I mentioned there, I accept the respondent position according to which not every transaction presented to the company constitutes a corporate opportunity. And the classification of a transaction as such depends on a variety, variety of consideration including the company's line of business as well as the proposed transaction quality and other terms. Regarding the difference between the SIM case, a transaction rejected to business consideration, and the Pangaya case that was given by my, my, given by my colleague Justice Ronen uh, two years later, before that, a transaction rejected among other things due to lack of, to lack of financing, financial ability, I concluded that it is right to distinguish between a business opportunity that the company was unable to enter due to lack of financial resources and a business opportunity that the company was able to exploit, but the company's board of directors decided it doesn't serve the company's best interest at the time. In this regard, the burden of proof regarding con conducting a, trans a transparent due process in accordance with existing law will rest on the company itself. And from that point, I didn't include that in the sentence, but I thought to myself that there must be, or I, I ought, or I have, or I should, or better for me, to try to uh, draw a suggested model in these cases. In my approach, problem comp Public companies' unique attributes require a different approach than private companies. In particular, is the objective difficulty in defining consent in the gap between the conductual private level versus the collective level. The difference in defining the line of business and the challenge of demarketing the prohibition con con content regarding public publicly, publicly traded companies, agency costs, and more. In an article I wrote with my senior clerk, advocate Ruth, Ab uh, Ruth Abraham, and my law clerk, Alon Luxemburg, we suggested a model for the application of the corporate opportunity doctrine in Israeli law. Route number one, the high road, contractual agreement, an agreement made in advance. And second point is distinguishing between the company's line of business and other fields in which the officer or the director may engage independently. The third point is establishing a procedural, me a procedural me mechanism for exercising the agreement. And the, another point was disclosure duty regarding any, activa any activation of the agreement according to the Israeli security law uh, or the uh, authority, authority position. And the fifth point was approval of the agreement will be in accordance with the Israeli company's law, chapter five, governing related, related party transaction. And route number two, the application of the doctrine analyzes its two pillars. The company line business, public documents and disclosures, prospectus, financial statements, and ongoing disclosure. And about the, on the other hand, the non-public documents access only through litigation. Associating the business opportunity with the company. In what capacity was the business opportunity offered? 
director, officer, or private businessman, where companies' resources utilized for the purpose of usurping the business opportunity? If so, was it vital for usurping the opportunity? Was the company able to take advantage of the business opportunity, adopting the Delaware approach regarding lack of financial ability? Thank you very much.